Hey everybody, it's your boy. And yes, of course, I'm going to be talking about the whole Kanye West thing because why not? This is honestly a golden opportunity for us to watch a PSYOP in progress because it's ongoing. And yes, I'm calling it a PSYOP because when Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos, at least at the beginning anyway, are involved, you can be guaranteed that this is in fact a PSYOP. And when the person who is leading this so-called campaign or PSYOP is Kanye West. I mean, again, I don't know if this is meant to be some kind of publicity campaign or a political campaign. I have no idea what Kanye is doing. Then you can be guaranteed that this is indeed a PSYOP because only people like Kanye West are dumb enough to fall for this. First off, Nick Fuentes. The guy is a glowy. We all know this. We know that the guy is not what he seems. He's the complete opposite of what he likes to portray himself as. From the clean cut Tradkath Groiper to this hoodie wearing street urchin look that he's trying to go for, you can guarantee that this guy will change like a chameleon when it suits him best. This guy has been exposed to loads of times for not being exactly what he paints himself to be. And let's be honest, the things that he gets involved in, the things that he says and does, it all seems to be designed to make the right look bad. In fact, not only that, his entire purpose has been to derail the right. It seems that all he ever does is actually fight the right and not the left. Yeah, sure, every once in a while it's okay to look at your own side and criticise, and if that leads to some infighting, so be it. But as long as at the end of that infighting it's done, then it's done. But this guy just doesn't stop. This guy keeps trying to worm his way into movements and derail them. The Groiper phenomenon, for example, is a classic case of that. He was going after Charlie Kirk, who I have my reservations about as well, and I've met the guy. And as for Milo Yiannopoulos, well, again, the guy will do anything for a paycheck. And it seems to me, from what I've seen, that there's a little bit of personal revenge going on here in regards to Trump, which is why they had the whole telephone call or some kind of meeting that they tried to get with him and ultimately failed on. It seems to me like he's trying his very best to make sure that Trump 2024 doesn't happen. And depending on your opinion, you might like that or not. But that seems to be Milo Yiannopoulos' game. Until he got kicked out, that is, because maybe Kanye and Nick Fuentes realised that this guy's more trouble than he's worth, or Kanye soon found out that Milo's ancestry was something that he doesn't like. When you go into Infowars, you know, Alex Jones, somebody who, you know, for better or for worse, the guy's not an evil man. When you go into his show and make him look less crazy and actually make him look bad on his own show, that's when you know that this is something that is very sus at the very least. I mean, let's just take a look at what Kanye said and tell me that this has not been purposefully designed by Fuentes and Milo and whoever else is behind them to make all of us look bad. Saying that he loves Hitler, he loves everybody, but then hates the Zionists, which, as we all know, is code word for Jews, and then deciding to say that Hitler invented the microphone and the autobahn or the motorway, freeway, whatever you Americans call it. Like, first off, he didn't invent any of those things. At the very least, with the latter, he funded it, but it was only because he wanted to go east to invade. That's pretty much it, as we all know. It seems to me that Kanye is mentally ill. He's being taken advantage of. But of course, he's also willfully engaging with these people at the same time, thinking that he's in charge when he's not. So he can't be left off the hook entirely. But it's pretty clear that they've found things within him to exploit. As we all know, his mum sadly passed away due to some botched surgery and... Kanye blamed the Jewish doctor who was involved in that, although there was also an African-American doctor involved as well. I think that's been used to push him into this area to create controversy. I think that's something that's definitely been done. And I think eventually, I think we will learn that that has happened. But at the same time, it could be an elaborate troll. It could well be that. Nick Fuentes does love a little bit of a troll, as does Milo Yiannopoulos. And as for Kanye, I don't know, the guy's... So he doesn't really have a sense of humour as such. I think they probably have convinced him, look, this is something that will definitely push your campaign forward. You will definitely get a higher profile if you go into Infowars, dress up in a gimp suit, which is essentially what he was dressed up as, and do all these things, say all these things. Any publicity is good publicity. Well, that may be the case in showbiz, but in politics, is it? 
I don't think so, Kanye. I think you've been had. But the fallout on Twitter was amazing. Uh, that is something that we have to talk about because it also exposed Elon once again. I know I'm going on the bash Elon train, which makes a lot of his fanboys cry, but I'm sorry, but... The horrible things that he's said on Infowars aside, and also the idiocy that he's been spouting on Twitter, what exactly was that that was bannable? Not really. He didn't actually call for the death of anybody. He didn't call for violence against anybody. Maybe he's feeling that inside, but publicly, he hasn't spouted anything like that. And yet Elon decided to ban him for inciting violence. The only things I could see leading him to being banned was the logo that he posted on Twitter, which ended up being stolen from some random alien sex cult from France. It's not a white nationalist symbol of any kind. It's actually a mishmash of different symbols that's meant to be extraterrestrial. It's all just mumbo jumbo from that cult. Kanye stole it from that. And also this silly photo of Elon when he was fat being sprayed with water. And Kanye said, this will be my last tweet. And well, it was because the Twitter god decided it should be. Now, most likely it was the symbol that got Kanye banned. But again, it wasn't an incitement to, towards violence. It was just a symbol. A symbol that ended up not having any connotations whatsoever with any nationalist movement. Likewise, the Elon photo probably wasn't the reason why he got banned, but it's funny to say that he it was the reason, just because it makes Elon look like he has a massive ego, which he probably does, and didn't want to see photos like that of him online, which he probably doesn't care about, let's be honest, but it is pretty funny nonetheless. But it did accidentally expose that Elon isn't all about free speech, because Kanye should be able to say all these things aside from inciting violence and post these logos and not get punished because it's just a logo and it's just Elon photos and it's him being an idiot. I'd rather be him be out in the open where we can avoid him than underground and get worse and worse, which is probably what's going to happen now. It allow him to play the victim and say, I didn't do anything wrong, I didn't incite violence, and he kicked me off the platform. So much for free speech, Elon, and things like that. Does Elon really want that? Does anybody who is criticising Kanye want that? No, you don't want that. You want them out there to be criticised and until they incite actual violence, let them be. I mean, either way, this hasn't actually panned out for Kanye the way he thought it would. Milo's left, Nick is the only one that's around with him, and how long have they got until eventually the novelty wears thin and people start getting annoyed and realise that all of this is just either a psyop or a troll and ignore them? Kanye's pretty much tanked his musical career for this. He didn't have to get involved in any of this. He could have just continued making his music, he could have continued associating with sane people politically and be okay with it. But no, instead he had to go completely off the boil, probably because he himself is off the boil. It just, it feels like there's no rhyme or reason to it. I, I can't understand why he would willingly associate himself with these people and not do any background checks on them. That Nobody around him is doing a background check and saying, Kanye, no, these people are crazy. And as we know, Kanye thinks he can run for president. Well, he's not going to run for president after this. Because none of the people that the Gripers have ever championed have managed to gain any influence in the mainstream, have managed to become, uh, you know, politicians and have careers in politics. They seem to just fall by the wayside into obscurity. Now, Kanye won't fall into obscurity. He's too famous. He's too rich. He's it's got too much of a musical legacy for that to happen, but politically, it will be seen as a footnote, a strange time in his life where he associated with weirdos and internet trolls and feds and glowies and ultimately came across as a mentally ill person who needed help. All we have to do is ignore him. Ignore Nick Fuentes. Milo, we can ignore forever again because now he's gone until the next time he tries to wear his ugly head. Because if we don't ignore them, we're only going to get derailed further and further and look worse and worse and worse. Just ignore them. If we have to acknowledge something, a quick aside, a little debunk, and that's it. Move on. We don't need to keep going on about these people constantly because it's just going to waste our precious energy when we've got bigger fish to fry. But anyway, guys, I think I'll leave it there. I've said my piece. Until next time, it's been your boy, and I'll see you all later.